So in this short video, I'll be taking you through how to interpret photographs around the theme settlement. So when it comes to photograph, photograph interpretation questions, the syllabus requires you to give simple descriptions of human and physical landscapes and focus on geographical phenomena from photographs, aerial photographs, satellite images and GIS. So the purpose of this video is to take you through example questions, getting you to con looking at when you approach that question, what are the common points to consider and you should be looking at when interpreting a photograph and then um, take you through how to write the exam responses and also give you some additional questions to practice from. Now remember, uh, these aren't all of the examples, these are just some I've picked out from past papers. And so make sure please that you constantly are practicing these skills. So the vast majority of all photograph interpretation questions are described questions, which means that the number of marks the question uh, says is, is, is weighted. So if it's two marks, three marks, tells you exactly the number of unique unique observations, features, points that need to be made. So here's the first question here, it's nice and straightforward. Uh, first part, you've got a figure, you can see the one on the right hand side, describe the housing shown in figure 3.1 and as well suggest reasons for the original site and growth of the settlement. So what we're going to do is take each question first. So when it comes to these questions, the first thing to do is start big and to identify which type of settlements you can see. Is it linear, nucleated or dispersed? And then once you've got that, then that's just a really helpful starting point because I can already tell you a few things about what should already be there, potential reasons for the site and growth of that settlement. And then when it comes to the housing or buildings, then we can start looking at focusing on the actual buildings themselves, the settlements. So the first thing to consider is the size of the buildings. Are they large or small? What's the average number of stories that you can see? Is it single, is it like um, bungalows or is it just a single story building? Or is there multiple stories? Roughly, quick look, is it two, three or more? Are the buildings generally joined together or are they close together or are they separate and spread out? Is there a similar design? Is there a variety of design? If so, is there a common building material, common colours? They look old or modern. And other features as well. Can you see lots of pools, certain types of chimneys, garages, anything like that? Or the windows, are there particular features about the windows that are common, unique? Do they have solar panels? All these types of things you can consider. And so when it comes to labelling a photo, you can say, right, definitely nucleated. They are all of similar design. They're mainly multi-storey buildings. Most of them are close together or terraced. They're quite large. Many have small windows, windows and roofs, and there's red tiled roofs as well. So when it comes to writing the answer, we can get, although it says two marks and it's two individual, that means two unique features, you can write actually quite a long sentence of loads of different features to make sure you get all of the marks. So here you can say the housing is nucleated, large and mostly close together. They are built on multiple levels with red tiled roofs. And you can see here that, yep, all of that's there. And so we can get lots of marks. Now, the second question for this particular, um, from these past questions, we're looking at the reasons for the original site and growth of the settlement in figure 3.1. So when it comes to looking at the site of a settlement, we need to remember that the site of a settlement is the reasons why that land was chosen to build a settlement. So we're looking for clues about why people many years ago chose to build a settlement there. So the first thing we consider is, can we see availability of water? Because obviously from the availability of water, you can use that to plant crops, water your homes and transport if it's large enough. As well as the evidence of fertile soil, i.e. have they grown crops there? Or is there lots of trees and vegetation? What's the relief like? Is it flats, steep? Is this a good relief for defense? And can you see evidence in natural resources such as woodlands, quarry for rocks, and other various um, ores? And as well, is it got evidence of accessibility? Are there transport links, rivers of transport, and things like that? And then when you've got all of those factors, and you also include things like climate, you can then start to think about why did this, why the settlement grew. Yeah, because if there's lots of fertile soil that might attract people there to work as farmers, it's able to support a large population. If the climate's good, then again, it can support it. It's got natural resources. It's able to provide the resources required to build and um, 
growth assessment as well. If it's accessible, it means it's able to trade more easily with other places and is easier to get to, so that makes it more attractive for people to move to. So once you've got all those factors, you can start labeling the photo that you've got here. So these are the various reasons for potentially why that place was located and how it grew to and why it grew. So very gentle slopes, easy to build on, grassland, so it implies there's lots of fertile soil. Um, trees dotted around as well, so great building materials. It's flat land, so again, easy to build on. Um, there's a river, wet point, so again, drinking water, and then roads meet, multiple roads meet there, so it's a good transport node. And so you can bring all those together in a nice little paragraph like that. And again, looking at the mark scheme, brilliant. We're ticking all of those boxes. So other common points that are easy to look at, there's trees, you can use that for fuel building, flat lands or flat gentle lands, easy to build on as well. Now these next type of questions, I always think of Google Street View. Imagine that you dropped the little orange person onto a map and assuming that they had been titled, you were dropped in there. And from these, you need to identify the land use zone of that particular city. So you get there and you, you kind of look at, okay, this looks residential because this looks like we're part in the center of the city because. So this is what the types of these questions are asking you to do. You know, how do you know that you're in this part of the city? Or so, for example, here you need to match up figure 3.1 to three with the various land use zone. So for example, the top one, I would assume is industrial because there's lots of big warehouse type looking buildings. Um, the second one looks very residential and the third one looks like the central business district. So again, the theory that you should be really looking at is like land use models. Okay, so yeah, again, central business district, what makes the central business district unique to say light manufacturing areas, low cost residential? So what defines these from a sort of, if you've been dropped in there, like I said, from on Strugal Street View, how do you know you are in a medium class residential? What evidence have you got around you? So just to go through some common land use zones that you can see here um, and the key characteristics, as you can see here appearing onto your screen, these are the types of things that you can consider. Okay, you need to look at you know, the location where do you expect to see them in the city? You know, and what clues do you have there? So this is something that you might want to pause and have a little think about. Um, so again, you know, for example, in the central business district, you know you're there because there's lots of tall, modern looking buildings. It's very expensive looking. It's probably a lack of open space. There'll be lots of shops, offices, and things like that around. Other common um, other zones that you might come in, like industry, for example, and slums that you would tend to find in, say, uh, low middle income countries and things like that, even actually in, in, and in some wealthier countries too. So again, when it comes to looking at the reasons for why they're there, you need to consider the price of land, the space required to have that type of land use, uh, the amount of people you might rec be required. Do you want some green space or is there demand for green space? the importance of accessibility and transport and the style of buildings too. So if we go back to this question here, describe the feature of the land use zone shown in figure 3.2. Well, you can look, what, what can you see? Well, it's in grids. There's lots of swimming pools, there's sloping roofs, they're very low rise bungalows or low storeys. There's lots of wide straight roads and there's trees. So this kind of gives you a clue that it is a residential area. And with all those points here, I'm not going to take time to put them into a little paragraph. You should be able to do that now. But you can see here, yeah, brilliant. We're ticking all those boxes really, really well. If you want to have a little go, there's a practice question here. So pause the video and uh, have a go and then move forward to have a look at the um, answers on the next slide. Um, just before I stop the video, uh, you can also look at my tourism video and there's some practice questions there that tie in very nicely to settlements as well. So if you like the video, please uh, like the video. And if you think your friends would find it very useful, please do share it with them. Thank you for watching.